Hello there, and welcome to, um, actually, uh, an attack that I'm super proud of. I'm not gonna lie to ya. I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, try to twist this and be like, Psh, this was nothing. Um, and I, I, I forgot that this was even in here right now like this as is. Um, but, yeah, this, this is, uh, the next episode in the task force road trip and for this particular uh episode we are taking a quick look at dirty isle or yeah well dirty isle it, it's dirty isle technically um which oh yeah this is the only part of the attack that i really bored and I was like, why did I do that? What happened? I think I my finger, I just fat fingered it or something. Uh, and, and honestly, I pretty much lost an entire boat. If not like a boat and a half right there. Um, which is okay, but really made things super tight. You know, a lot tighter than they needed to be, let's just say. Uh, so I, I was really fortunate. This is uh, my first time doing Machina. Uh, Machina. I, I'm not sure. See, like Machinima. I know it's not Machinima. I'm gonna go with Machina. Anyways, uh, Machina. Ah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go with. I freaking smoked in there and I took it out. And, and I get that this particular layout was really, really easy in comparison to some of the other um, layouts that I've seen. Like, I know I've, I've had this particular map with, instead of the, the corner there being nice and open, it's just, like, filled with machine guns and sniper towers and rockets and all kinds of silliness. And so, like, I know that can get a lot harder than it was but with that one being the way it is I feel like I learned some stuff uh, very very nice very cool I uh, had some fun and uh, anyways let's get to what's actually important and that is the dirty aisle and uh, as you can see this is the burn skin burn skinator or Burnskinator? Uh, yeah. We're, we're gonna call him Burns, because everybody in the task force calls him Burn anyways. Um, so this particular task force is a 10-man task force that is kind of in the sour grapes to uh, bottleneck range of ops, I guess. Honestly, with these guys, even more so than I think any other task force I've ever been in. Um, the biggest deciding factor is how much uh, they have, like how much intel they have as to which op they can start. It is purely based off of how much intel. And for a 10 man, some of these guys are freaking crazy. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, there, there are guys rolling around over 100 intel, you know, over 70 intel. Like, I. I thought I was being lazy because I only had like 37, like mid 30s somewhere in four days and like I was, I was by far the laziest and lowest generating uh, person in the task force, which I felt horrible, I'm not gonna lie. I apologize to the guys in there because uh, yeah, my intel generation was not fantastic, and I feel like if I had done a little better, maybe maybe you guys could have done some higher end ops. I don't know, uh, but yes. So, uh, as always, their hashtag is down below in the comments, uh, as, as is like you know the little uh, question and answer thing that I do because. Well, I'm nosy, and if I'm gonna roll all up in some up, I'm I'm gonna be like, "Yo, what up? Give me some info, bra." Um, so yes, uh, they are a ten man, 
And I gotta say, I, out of all of the task forces that I've joined, I'm pretty sure they have the like the highest um, state not standard, but the higher highest requirements. Uh, they actually require when I joined 500 VP, uh, which they then cranked immediately back up to 600 VP. So I think they were just kind of like, all right, we're gonna lower it. We'll let him join because I don't have 600 VP. But like everybody in this task force has like seven eight hundred. VP, uh, and they're all incredibly active and really nice, and you know, just all around class acts, um, including old Dirty Bert. Because you know, when I saw ODB, I was like, oh snap, it's ODB on Dirty Isle. But no, uh, you know, super nice guy, uh, very polite, very nice. He could almost be an honorary Canadian. Um, actually, all of them could be. And and I'm going to get back to that in a bit. Uh, like, at the end of the video. Um, but yes, yeah, so uh, with this particular task force, uh, it was kind of interesting because it started off as an, a, a five-man... Well, okay, it started off as a 50-man... And basically, a, like, a core group of people in the task force who had been busting their humps and kind of carrying the 50-man eventually were just like, yo, this isn't cool, guys. We gotta do something about this. And uh, they kind of splintered off, and they started a five-man, um, which then kind of grew into a ten-man, I guess? Um, and, and really, they, they were just looking to get away from the leeches, and, like, I guess their 50-man had grown kind of stagnant because of all the leeches. <coughs> Excuse me one minute, sorry, I, uh, I'm suffering from the old dry throat. Oh, sorry about that much better now. I can actually, you know, feel my vocal cords moving around instead of gritting back and forth like sandpaper. Oh my goodness. If I keep doing this, I'll get nodes, and then I won't be able to hit the same tone, or the, the same notes that I used to, because I have nodes. If you get that reference. <laughs> All the power to you. <laughs> Don't admit to it. <laughs> uh, Alright, so... Um, daily ops are definitely a thing in this task force. Uh, depending on, like I say, how many... Uh, how much intel they have is the only deciding factor on how difficult the particular op of the day is. Um... And the, like, it, they do daily ops, and they are definitely pushing for more task force points because they're trying to move up in the ranks. But when it comes right down to it, they're more about the fun and having a good time and trying things out and doing stuff. They're more about that than they are about, like, oh, you've got to do the perfect attack and get the win because if you don't get the win then, you know, you're out of the family. Um, which is very cool, very nice. Uh, it is an, another, you know, uh, obviously all of the task forces that I joined are English-speaking task forces. This is no different um, because, well, I speak the English sort of-ish sometimes. And <laughs> it would be really weird if I joined, you know, like a French task force and was like, so guys, um, how to make these things? Bonjour. Yes, you know, like, uh, all right, French might be a bad example, but you know, like, if I were to join like a German task force or something and be like, "Hey guys, sprechen Sie Deutsch, ja, Volkswagen." All right. Uh, there wouldn't be a lot of communication. It would make the questionnaire <laughs> really, really hard. And, um, you know, obviously, 
communicating those strategies would be a little difficult to. Unless, of course, they had a built-in translator who just happened to be online every time I was online. In which case, you know, that would be very cool. I really don't mind adding a translator to my entourage, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, anyways, uh, yes, back English speaking, making, yes. Uh, from the States, of course. And... Um, you know, the pretty pretty standard stuff, as as pretty much every, almost every other task force. Um, don't don't sabotage. That's that's the only unwritten rule they have. Like they they obviously have requirements for intel. They obviously have requirements for attacking a, as frequently as possible, um, or like every op, unless you notify you know that you're going on vacation or the op gets wiped out before you get a chance to attack or whatever like they're they're not going to penalize you for those but um so uh, they had the no sabotage rule and also uh just like more of a an unwritten rule of on harder ta like on harder ops just communicate talk through your strategy you know share with people so that everybody can be like, yeah, that's a good plan, yeah, let's do that. Or, oh no, be careful if you're doing that, because if you do this and then that and the thing, the dang, dang, the dang, dang. And which actually helped a lot, because I'm not going to lie, on one of the days, uh, I was going to do a Smoky Zooka run on a base, well, like a core, and I had looked at everything, and I had planned everything out, and I had gotten all the numbers, and I was totally good, and I could totally pull it off. And then, uh, you know, because I was chatting in the task force chat, I was like, yeah, I'm thinking of doing this, and blah, blah, blah. And they were like, oh, yeah, fully boosted, that should be no problem. You know, you're looking at, like, five shocks. And I was like, wait a minute, all of my math and planning and figuring out was for Four shocks, and I went back and realized I had somehow completely missed a shock launcher, which would have been a massive noob, uh, you know, like goof up because that really that would have completely fried the entire attack. Um, so it, it was really good because I was like, oh, shnikes, let's rewind this and you know, not attack this and fail epically because I can't shock enough things. How about instead we do different stuff? Uh, also, I, I was talking about Old Dirty Bert earlier. Uh, this is ODB's attack. And as you can see, ODB believes in the utmost finesse in all attacks. Um, <laughs> Uh, we were we were actually chatting because you know when the when the op gets started everybody's kind of online and ready to do their attack and is watching other people's attacks and chatting and having a good time, um, and <laughs> we we were we were possibly heckling maybe a little bit uh, you know maybe talking a little bit of trash in in chat while he was doing his attack just being like, mm, yes the finesse attack I see I see. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Uh, because, you know. Anyways, I'm not going to explain sarcasm in this video. Let's move on. Ah. So, uh, I, I, I asked, I was kind of like, hey, you know, what's your favorite maps? Least favorite maps, kind of a thing? Um, and they kind of took it next level, went very meta with it. Uh, they, instead of choosing specific maps and being like, oh, I like sliding block or I like whatever. They like Tinder, doing Tinderbox, the, 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 uh, the whole op, you know, they want to be doing Tinderbox on a daily basis. If they had the intel to pull it off, they would be doing Tinderbox on a daily basis. Uh, so also, uh, like, they're, they're pretty much always one or two people down. Uh, so if anyone out there is, you know, looking for a really challenging but more laid-back environment uh, and, you know, is willing to pump out like a hundred intel a week and like be a boss, uh, definitely take a look at these guys. These, these guys might be the task force that you're looking for if, you know, you're 
you're fully offensive and you're looking to do some attacks, but you don't want to have to deal with like, you know, succeed or die kind of stress levels. I, I don't know what task force would possibly have that, but you, you get the idea. Um, <clears throat> excuse me again. So, yes, uh, take, take a look. And even, even if you're maybe not at that level, but you're just looking to move in that direction, these guys might be the guys, like, they were very understanding of and helpful with, for me and, like, definitely team players and doing great things uh, and having great ideas. So, you know, uh, maybe, maybe take a look. And then, of course, for the least faves, sorry, <laughs> total sidetrack there. Uh, for the least faves, they basically didn't have anything. I, I, because they said Tinderbox, though, for their favorite, I feel like Milk Run would be their least favorite. I think that's fair, but hey, who am I? Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, when I, when I asked, like, you know, why, why a 10-man? Why not a 5-man? And they were like, well, we started as a 5-man. And it was awesome, but they went to 10-man because they wanted to do higher-end ops. And, uh, you know, uh, when, when, they're, when they've got a full set of people, when they're at 10 out of 10, uh, it goes really, really smoothly. They get lots of intel. They're able to do Tinderbox on a regular basis, which makes them incredibly happy because, well, it's a lot of fun and it's a challenge. And it's GTs, if you would. Um, so, yes, uh, it was, it was kind of interesting to see, uh, how things kind of ended up being a 10-man. Uh, they also have a Facebook page, which, uh, I don't actually have, but if you go search for Dirty Isle Boom Beach on Facebook, I'm sure you're gonna find them, no problem. If you wanna, you know, chat with them, maybe, like, figure some things out hash out whatever you need to hash out, I don't know, maybe offer them assistance or suggestions or uh, just, you know, make sure they're a good fit for you if you want to join their team because no one wants to join that task force where like they're the one person that's like, hey, I'm a free spirit, who needs to boost, ah, I'm just going to attack with, I don't know, grenadiers on a base that is nothing but rocket launchers uh you know I, and then have like the rest of the task force just be like <sighs> anyway um uh, also for the record i uh i i am showing this last attack after being like hey, my first attack because um well well you'll you'll you'll, you'll see how this this attack goes uh <laughs> and we're gonna leave it at that <laughs> It's kind of embarrassing. And you know what? They were absolutely fantastic about it. They took it in stride. They laughed. And especially because before I did this attack, I was like, oh, I could do this attack. It's so easy. I wouldn't even have to boost. This is no problem. Ah. You know, talking a little bit of smack in, in Task Force chat because, well, what else are you going to do in Task Force chat, right? Uh, so, yeah, I uh, talked a little bit of smack and then, well... It, this will play out. While this plays out, though, I uh, definitely want to hit up. They had the idea uh, for, you know, things they'd like to see Task Force uh, and Ops and stuff get is the ability to buy a second attack for, like, say, 20 diamonds or something. Um, you know, just, like, once per op, if you need an extra attack, shell out some diamonds, get that extra, like, one attack in there, or maybe one attack each or whatever... Uh, just in case someone does bork an attack and, you know, rather than have one accident screw over the entire task force, it kind of gives you a mulligan so you can have that second chance, which I thought was a pretty cool idea, especially considering I would have happily spent 20 diamonds to fix this mess. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, uh, as far as associations and stuff, this task force doesn't have any associations currently. However, uh, they do have a lot of friends in other task forces that they help out. So there, there is a lot of uh, community 
that comes with the task force, even if it isn't necessarily, like, this task force's community, you know? It's just the Boom Beach community in general, I guess. Anyways, uh, with that, I've kind of hit as much as I could possibly hit during this, uh, during this episode. Um, and, of course, I, I've got to leave uh, with my head held high uh, for 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 all the things because this attack is so yeah anyways thanks very much for watching guys hopefully this has been helpful oh. hopefully it's been entertaining <sighs> yeah 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 you're really watching that uh, and most importantly hopefully you guys have a fantastic day while I do a hashtag chicken fail. <laughs>